Hello and welcome back to Alice Talks Football and welcome back to another live Manchester United news and transfer news update show. Lots and lots to talk about actually today. There's lots of interesting things to talk about as well, not just transfer news. Manchester United squad travelling to Norway has been confirmed and reportedly the lineup that we're going to play tomorrow versus Norway will be the lineup we use versus Brighton. So it'll be interesting to see who's involved, but no Luke Shaw, no Varane, you know, on the plane. So that's interesting. Is it an injury? Is Ten Hag plan not Luke Shaw and Varane. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, more news has come out about a change to the structure of the board with David Gear and Sir Alex Ferguson now being added back to the board by uh, Richard Arnold, which originally wasn't going to be the case. And Ronaldo actually speaking out. So Ronaldo's actually addressed the transfer rumours about him desperate to leave and unhappy with United and how him and George Mendes were unhappy after the meeting at Carrington. And Ronaldo's called it a load of rubbish. Now, Ronaldo was not on the plane to Norway, but Ronaldo was seen at Manchester United training today and it's believed that he will be involved versus Real Vallecano. But we've also got some news on Anthony and, of course, Benjamin Sesco. Now, the big news story of the day is on Benjamin Sesco, which I do want to get into. Fabrizio Romano has confirmed that United have had direct contacts with Sesco. United are in direct talks with Sesco's agents and that Manchester United would be interested in doing a deal for Benjamin Sesco. So this is confirmed by Fabrizio Romano that Sesco is actually a player that Manchester United want. Um, this is obviously, we know it's come out today from Samuel Luckhurst that Manchester United want to bring in four more players, a goalie, an attacker and two midfielders and potentially even a right back. And it's sort of been confirmed about the type of players Eric Tenard wants to bring in next. That's all been um, coming out as well. But we haven't got a Sesco. Here we go. Nothing, nothing's happened. No bid or anything. Romano did say, you know, Romano did confirm that United are in for Sesco. United did, Romano did confirm United held talks with Sesco. But obviously we need to get that deal over the line. We need to know what the price is. Romano did also say that because RB Salzburg do not want to sell Benjamin Sesco, United would be looking at paying upwards of £30 million for a 19-year-old striker, which you know is quite on the pricey side considering they did sell Haaland for £20 million. And you know, they are the type of club to sell players for a cut price but first of all guys please do smash that like button if you have not already and of course subscribe down below to Alice Talks Football if you're new we're only 11 subscribers away from 43k we're on 42,989 subscribers so only 11 more people need to hit that subscribe button to hit the target so it'd be amazing if we could hit that by the end of the stream but before I get into the Benjamin Sesco news and all that who is likely to cost a fortune I do quickly want to get into what the Man United squad is um, for the for the game tomorrow and reportedly who we're playing tomorrow is who's going to be involved versus Brighton so it's come out today from, from numerous reports from obviously people that Man United brief in the media saying basically the team that Manchester United play against Atletico Madrid will be similar to the team they plan to play versus Brighton and that Manchester United sort of starting 11 against Atletico Madrid will be similar to that of what the starting 11 will be versus Brighton so all the players playing for Manchester United today, and I don't know if you can see that. Is, is that better? Can you can you guys read that okay? Is that too big? Is that too small? And all of that. But this is obviously the players that have travelled to Norway with Manchester United. And this is the travelling squad. The, so basically, reportedly, everyone that's travelled to Norway is everyone that's going to be available versus Brighton first game of the season. So everyone on this list is going to be available Brighton first game of the season. So you've got to hear and goal. You've got Deleu at right back. You've got Lindelof, Maguire and Lissandra Martin as the centre-back options. And then you've got Malassia and Alex Tellez as potentially the left-back options as well. No Luke Shaw, no Varane. Are they fit? Are they not going to be involved versus um, Brighton? We'll have to wait and see. In the midfield, you've got Ericsson, you've got Bruno, you've got Fred, you've got Garner, you've got Scott McTominay, you've got Palestra and you've got Donny Mandabic. The two interesting things for me, though is obviously Garner and Palestri the two are the only two academy players and Ethan Lair because we've got no backup right back but Garner and Palestri the only two academy players that um Eric Tenog has brought with him so that would suggest to me that the only ones Eric Tenog isn't thinking of going on loan is Garner and Palestri and when I look at that I think okay so maybe Garner's not going out alone and maybe Palestri's not going out alone the fact that there's no Ahmad maybe he's going on loan the fact that there's no Mejbri, maybe he's going on loan. He's reported to go on loan. The fact that there's no Chong, maybe he's going on loan. The players that are called up, the Garners and, and the Palestries, who probably, Palestri only played one game and was really impressive. And Garner probably is the closest academy player we do have to getting into the first team. And they're the only ones that actually were called up. What I will do is, and Usman commented on this, he said, our backup goalkeeper is Heaton, our backup centre-back is Lindelof, our start in the field is McFred, and our backup attacker is Alanga. And this is what Usman tweeted when he looked at the lineup. And Usman makes a really good point here, because 
look at the lack of depth. I've just shown you the lineup that Manchester United have taken with them to Atletico Madrid, which is reportedly our strongest lineup and our lineup ready for the start of the season. And as Usman said, the lack of squad depth is it's really frightening as well. Um, I'm really funny. Shaw might be available second game. I, um, I want to see Martinez and Bailly at the back. Bailly looks like he's on his way out. I know Bailly doesn't want to leave Manchester United, and I think that we should be using Bailly more than we do. But Bailly's not in the plan because he's not a good ball-playing centre-back. Now, I think Bailly defensively is one of our best centre-backs, but on the ball, he isn't. And Ten Hag wants a good ball-playing centre-back. Ten Hag doesn't rate Bailly. Bailly's not really wanted at United. He's right down the pecking order where I don't think he deserves to be that far down. And I think Bailly is on the way out, which is why he's not involved, which is such a shame as well. Uh, Alice, it's not it's not without presence seven years ago. We paid 36 million for Sterling with over 21 million as an add-on. Same for Martial. Yeah, you can do that with Sesco. I just think the difference is that Sesco is not in a top five league and you do make a point. I do think 30 odd million for Sesco is fine. It's when you're hearing that price tags of 50 million for Benjamin Sesco, in which I think is quite worrying as well. Ahmad simply isn't ready. He should be sold because he'll never break into the first team. There's potential for Ahmad to break into the first team, but he definitely needs a loan as well. And in my opinion, this is a great time to buy Sesco. Or also, I can't understand why United can't give game time as we're not favourites to win any trophies this season. I heard Bayern and Real Madrid are in You know what? I look at that. I look at the squad that I got on the screen. And I look at the lack of squad depth at Manchester United. And you're absolutely right. Um, you know, our backup attacker is Elanga. Now, I don't know if Sesco is ready. I think Sesco is a good player. I don't know if he's ready. I think he's a player that would probably benefit more from two seasons in the Bundesliga than goes to the Prem. I don't think he's 100% Prem ready. But when you look at the state of our attack, and I do like Elanga, and I have no issue with Elanga, but for me, he's more of an athlete than a footballer. If an injury happens to our front three, it's Elanga. It's absolutely Elanga. Like, let let me get the lineup up for you again. Let me paste the lineup up, up onto your screen so you can see this. This is the lineup. It is De Gea in goal. It is it's De Loa at right back. It's Lindelof and Maguire at centre back with Malassia at left back. You've got Martinez, who will probably come on for a little bit. You, we're going to have Mook, Fred and Bruno playing with maybe maybe Donny and Eriksson to come on for a little bit. And then we've got a front three of Marshall, Sancho, Rashford. But if something happens to Marshall, Sancho and Rashford, who are our options? Palestri and Alanga. Now, I like Palestri, but he didn't get a single goal and assist when he was on loan last season. And I like Alanga, but I don't think Alanga is, is that good. I think there's a massive drop-off between Sancho and Alanga. I even think if Rashford finds form, even though I thought Alanga was better than Rashford last season, if Rashford finds form, there's still a big drop-off between Alanga and Rashford. And what worries me is this is the side that will be featuring versus Brighton. Ronaldo's not ready for the Brighton game. He won't be involved, OK? This the lineup that plays against Atletico Madrid will likely be the lineup that plays versus Brighton, you know. And this squad is the squad that Tenog believes will be his squad available first game of the season. I don't know what's happening with Shaw. I don't know how, what's happening with Brown. They're not 100 percent fit. But this is likely to be Tenog's first squad, first squad, first game of the season. And where I have an issue with this is you're telling me Man United's first game of the season. That's the squad. You're telling me after our worst ever season, we came sixth last year, worst ever season. Sick was honestly a compliment to us because we were much worse than sick. We were absolutely dreadful last season. And you're telling me first game of the season, Brighton, we've got Martinez, Malassia and, and Ericsson that are new. Cool. Maybe Malassia will start. But you're telling me first game of the season, United aren't going to have a new midfielder. We we put up with Mug Fred the whole of last season. It was crap. And if someone had said to me in May, we're going to lose Pogba, we're going to lose Matic, and we're going to start next game, the, the first game of next season with we'll Fred, because even though we lost Pogba and Matic, we still haven't signed a new defensive midfielder that can play in the pivot. I'd have said, I'm. I'd have said, Ten Hag's desperate for a midfielder. Ten Hag's made it clear he wants two midfielders, two midfielders that can play in that deep role. Ten Hag's number one priority is midfield. We've just lost two midfielders. Our number one priority a year ago was midfield, and we had Pogba and Matic. Our number one priority is still midfield without Pogba Matic. So there's just McFred. I guess there's Garner. I guess there's Donny. But let's be honest, there's just McFred. I would have been like, you're lying. You're lying. There's no way that Man United would go into the first game of the season with practically the starting 11 that finished sixth last year, the starting 11 that let them down. In fact, even weaker. Because you could say what you want about Pogba, but we're a weaker team about Pogba. You can say what you want about Cavani, but we could use him for the squad depth. You can say what you want about Matic, but when he, when he, you know, we can only play once a week, but he probably was our best midfielder. You can say what you want about Lingard, but there's the squad depth. You know, I'm not saying that we, I'm obviously, I think we should have let them go, but we're actually, when you think about it, weaker. We've got, we're going to be weaker against Brighton than we were at the end of last season. No, I think Martinez, Ericsson and Malassia are great, great signings. 
But Malassia is, is a backup left back that might start because of Luke Shaw's injuries. Martinez is a left sided centre back. And that's probably our big main sign. I think Eriksson's a player we've got on a free to replace Matter that will probably be more heavily involved than Matter. While I'm happy with the signings, I think this is the squad that's going to feature against the Better Madrid. And this is the squad that's really we're going to be using first game of the season versus Brighton. And I look at that and that absolutely worries me. Thank you very much, Rob, for the super chat. Uh, miss you folks, still banged up pretty bad and we'll be back soon. Like, sub, share, daily updates right here. Big up Rob for the super chat. Really appreciate the support on the channel. Yes, guys, please do smash that like button if you have not already. Of course, nothing to hit that like button. And do subscribe if you're new. We're on 42,990 subscribers. So I'm only 10 subscribers away from hitting that 43K target. And it's absolutely three to subscribe. So if you are new, make sure you bash that subscribe button as well. I will get into some live chats in a minute. But unbelievable, we do not get a player like Brentford as a rotation player. We need more squad depth. Honestly, Plestri's the type of player Eric Tenag likes. Plestri loves to attack the fullback, same as Martial. Now, I do think what's really, really interesting is that of all the academy players, there's no Alanga. No, there is Alanga, sorry. Basically, it's the first team that is fit. And out of the academy players, he's chosen Garner and Plestri. He's not chosen Ahmad. He's not chosen Mejbri. He's not chosen Chong. He's not chosen Iqbal. He's not chosen Charlie Savage. He's not chosen any of those players. He's chosen Palestri. OK, which says to me the fact that that only Garner and Palestri have been chosen, not Savage, not Iqbal, not, not Ahmad, says to me that these are probably the players Tenor greats. These are the youth players that Tenor plans to incorporate that not, that won't be going out alone. Now, I still think Palestri wants to go out alone. I've been heard. I've been told Palestri wants to go out alone because he wants to be in Uruguay in the World Cup. He wants game time. But I have a feeling we might be keeping James Garner. Now, I think Man United's intention was to always give James Garner a Premier League loan and let him play week in, week out. But I think because of the shambles of this transfer window, the fact that Eric Ten Hag wants two midfielders in that can play that defensive role and hasn't even got one in, I think we're going to be keeping James Garner. And I think Eric Ten Hag is probably Spain towards keeping James Garner because of the lack of options in midfield. I think it could be James Garner and we we get Donny Van, not Donny Van, but we get De Jong right at the end of the window. And maybe because of the lack of depth for an attack, he's gone Palestri, I need you next season, you can't go out on loan. Because Anthony, we will get into Anthony in a second, it's still on, but it's practically off. I think Anthony, Anthony's getting really annoyed at Ajax, actually. Reports are coming out saying that Anthony's got upset and frustrated with Ajax, he wants Ajax to let him go. Um, and that is the situation going with Anthony. Anthony's not happy with Ajax at all in the slightest. Um, but look, Anthony, it, it's you know, Tenog wants an attacker and a midfielder, and he's taken Palestri and Garner with him, which could insinuate that Palestri and Garner will be involved first game of the season due to him not getting the backing he wants. And I think that's, you know, that's, I think the squad is weaker than last season. This is our squad that will probably be the squad for Brighton. I think it is weaker as well. Uh, where is Ronaldo? Ronaldo's sitting out of this one. He's not ready to be back. It's really depressing that De Jong and the Ronaldo saga is going on this long. Not many clubs in for them. United should have put full stop to them. It's embarrassing. Hope we learn from this disaster, it says. Yeah, you make a good point, SK. It's just been going on and on and on and on. And it's just not fun to talk about. It's not fun to report. And I get that De Jong's pivotal to the plan. I get that De Jong's the number one target and all of that. But I just, I really can't be bothered to deal with it. Honestly, midfield starting tomorrow. Ericsson left, Bruno Centro, Don in the right. I mean, the midfield starting tomorrow, I guarantee you this is going to be McFred and Bruno. I'm very confident it will be McFred and Bruno. Honestly, I don't want it to be McFred and Bruno, but I think that's going to be the case as well. Anthony needs to hand in a transfer request. Well, reportedly, I am going to get into the Anthony news in just a second. So Anthony to Manchester United seemed off. The Athletic had said that United had been put off by the 100 million euro valuation on Anthony and that Manchester United were not currently pursuing Anthony. However, Anthony is still a target and a player of interest. Anthony is reportedly really, really annoyed and frustrated with Ajax. And Anthony could even put in a transfer request, which would probably lower his asking price a lot more significant, significantly. I know that Ajax do not want to sell Anthony, but Anthony just wants to go. He wants out. And I think that's what United's counting on Anthony. They know that they cannot pay the crazy price tag for Anthony. We're now moving on to Sesco, as Romano has confirmed. You know, we like him, but we're like we're not playing, paying that much for Anthony. You know, it is absolutely absurd the kind of money they want us to pay for Anthony as well. So, honestly, I think the situation with Anthony, and I will tell you this now, I think it's that United want Anthony, Anthony wants Man United, and you sit there and you go, well, if Anthony wants Man United, then United want Anthony, and Ten Hag wants Anthony, is he, he's a number one target, then why hasn't this deal happened? What's going on with this deal? You know, and I understand that. You're thinking, surely, club wants a player, player wants that club, the deal's going to be sorted. 
And because Man United wasted all this time on Anthony, because when Man United were offered, a ch- offered the chance to sign Anthony for 40, 50 million pounds, they said no. We had a chance to sign Anthony for 50 million quid. I think it was 44 million pounds we could have got Anthony for in May. And we said, no, we're not going to sign anyone until we get De Jong. We need to know what the De Jong price is. We need to know what our budget is. And we wouldn't sign anyone else. So we wasted all this time on De Jong, lost out on Tim because Van Howe got on his head. Martinez became 20 million more expensive. And Anthony doubled in price, all because United were being this stubborn in for De Jong. You know, I want Anthony. Eric Tenog wants Anthony. Eric Tenog wanted Anthony since May. Anthony and De Jong are the two names right at the top of Eric Tenog's transfer list. Right at the top, I tell you this, guys. The problem is, Eric Tenog wants these players, but United are just fucking about, fucking about, fucking about. Oh, shit, he's 100 million. So I think with Anthony, he's getting annoyed at Ajax. There's reports that Anthony could put in a transfer request. And if that's the case, then Anthony's back on. But as it stands... I do not see Anthony being a Manchester United player come September, as it stands. I think Anthony's really got to push for that move if he wants it to happen, and I will tell you that now. Um, um, would you what would you swap deal for an Ronaldo for Neymar? Yeah or no? Honestly, is, is it, I don't think. Um, Apparently, Man United contact Fabian Weiss's agent. Where is that from? Is it from anyone reliable? I, I'd like that to be true, but I don't think we have as well. And agreed the board screwed up about early uh, Anthony not paying 100 million euros. I mean, look, I, and the thing is, 100 million for euros for Anthony is an absolute piss take as well. Like, I understand the board not wanting to spend 100 million for Anthony and us pulling out of it. It's an absolute joke. I will get into the Anthony news for you now. Uh, but what, what, what had been said, and this was what I wanted to show you about Anthony, was this. So if I press this here. This is what was said by Anthony. It said that Ajax also appeared to have priced Anthony out of the move to Old Trafford. Talks between Manchester United and the Dutch club over the player have been live for some time. That was James Ducker saying that basically United have been in pure talks with Anthony. I've been in a lot of talks with Anthony. But obviously it seems that, you know, he's been priced out of a move and Anthony's not happy about it. Is it the Man United board or Ten Hag being stubborn? I think Ten Hag said to Man United, I don't want players for the sake of it. I don't want you buying players because you don't get my main targets. I only want players that I want at this club. And Ten Hag's been very strict with United saying, please only get the players that I want. I don't want you buying me this player and this player and this player. I only want these kind of players at the club. And Ten Hag's been clear with that with United. Um, but uh, is he being stubborn with De Jong? I don't know. I think De Jong's given Ten Hag a lot of indications. I think, if anything, it's Man United being stubborn, taking too much time to actually get in who Ten Hag wants. If Man United didn't take all this time and actually just hurried up and delivered Ten Hag what he wanted and actually went, you know what, Ten Hag, I know this is your target, Ten Hag, I know this is your target, Ten Hag, I know this is your target, and got them in early, we wouldn't be in the situation. But because Man United have spent all this time on De Jong, we missed out on the golden opportunity to sign all the Ajax players that Ten Hag wanted. And now we're thin. Well, now we're really thin because we're like, we go, and you, you saw the squad, you know, we're going into the season with a really thin squad, a lot thinner than last season. And while I, I you know, I think the players that have gone should have gone, you know, we, we need two midfielders. We need another attacker at least. And that's where it's really, really worrying as well. Really, really worrying. You know, you've got to think, and I'm like, I'm going to get the lineup back on the screen. Let me, let me get it back on the screen for you guys. Let me get it back on the screen. This is our lineup as it stands of everyone that's fit. Everyone that will be fit and available for Brighton, this is our lineup. It's Mutford and Bruno, and then the backup is, of course, Eric Sungana and Donny, which I, I like, but we don't know how good they are. Ericsson's a free transfer. You know, Lindelof and Maguire and Martinez, Martial, Rashford, Sancho, where is the depth? Where is the numbers? And we're going into the season with this as our lineup. And likely, this will likely be the lineup versus Brighton because Ronaldo's not available. And Ten Hag's been sitting there saying, I want Anthony, I want De Jong right from the beginning of May. And Ten Hag's number one signing, we haven't got in May. Ten Hag's number one priority was midfield. Remember, it was reported that Ten Hag would like maybe Kante alongside De Jong from Laurie Whitwell. From tier one sources, Ten Hag stressed to United that he wanted two defensive midfielders. Ten Hag wanted two players that could play in the pivot. One being De Jong, one being someone else, one being Ericsson. Ten Hag wanted Anthony, Ten Hag wanted Timber, and Ten Hag wanted Nunes. Out of the players I've named, he hasn't got any of them. He got Manassia, who he wanted, brilliant. He got Ericsson, who he wanted, brilliant. And he's got Martinez, who he wanted, brilliant. But he didn't get Timber as first choice, so then we got Martinez. He didn't get Nunes. He doesn't look like he's going to get Anthony. So now we're moving on to Sesco, which I will get into the Sesco news in a second. But we're really, really thin, and I'm really worried for the season coming up how thin we are. I wanna, What I want to do quickly is... I want to quickly address the Ronaldo news um, because Ronaldo actually, if I can find it, liked some posts um, addressing, if I can find it. Yeah, here it is. 
So Ronaldo actually responded. So Ronaldo's responded to the news about him going to Atletico Madrid and all of that. And Ronaldo's responded to some of the rumours about him leaving Manchester United and wanting out of Manchester United. So first of all, Atletico Madrid put a banner out saying, Ronaldo, do not come. And Ronaldo responded to that on Instagram with loads of laughing, crying emojis, just seemed to not care. Ronaldo responded to the fact that Atletico Madrid fans don't want him. But Ronaldo actually said this. So basically, a report came out, and this is this is interesting. This is the report that came out. Um, and this is came out from a Ronaldo fan account saying, George Mendes told Manchester United that Cristiano Ronaldo is adamant about leaving, but Mendes left negotiations less than positive that Ronaldo would get his move. So Alex Ferguson has intervened and assisted Ronaldo is not for sale. So this was a report that came out yesterday by a lot of British journalists saying uh, that Ronaldo left the meeting with United at Carrington and Tenog not very well. Ronaldo's not happy with United. Ronaldo's desperate to leave. There's all these reports coming out that George Mendes and Ronaldo are not happy with United. They're not letting him leave. The negotiations were less than positive. And Ronaldo's responded to this and basically called it all lies. This is what Ronaldo said. So Ronaldo, so all this news that came out about Ronaldo yesterday, being angry and unhappy with United and and best begging to leave. And apparently the it was a really tense meeting with Ronaldo and Tenar because he was in, and it didn't come to a positive conclusion. Ronaldo said, impossible not to talk about me for one day. He says, otherwise the press makes no money. You know that if you don't lie, you can't get people's attention. Keep going that one day you'll get some news right. And Ronaldo's basically come out and said that all the news about him is lies. Well, not all the news, but he's just come out and said that news about him being unhappy with United is all a lie. So maybe the situation is, and then obviously we know the English media lie. We know that Man United will want to make Ronaldo out to be the monster and not them. Blah, de, blah, de, blah, de, blah, de, blah. But I'm getting the impression that the situation is from what we've been told. Ronaldo wants to leave Man United. We know Ronaldo wants to leave Man United. But I, I think, and if I'm going to be honest with the situation, from what I, from the assumption I make, from what I've been told and from what Ronaldo said, I get the impression is that Ronaldo wants to leave Manchester United, but will be respectful, will train, will not cause any issues. He likes Tenog, he, he likes Man United, but he does want to leave if a Champions League club comes for him. I think that United have told Ronaldo, we don't want to sell you, don't want to sell you, don't want to sell you, uh, blah, 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 blah. Ronaldo's been a bit annoyed about that, but he trusts George Mendes to get him a move and they've left it at that. I think the reports that come out, and Ronaldo said that the reports that have come out saying that it was a tense meeting, that him and Mendes left the meeting unhappy, they did not come to a conclusion, it was a negative meeting, there was arguments, there was a, there was a lot of negative reports about this meeting with Ronaldo and Man United saying that it was all going down, this and this was going down and this was going down and Mendes is fuming and Ronaldo's fuming and Ronaldo just called it all lies. Ronaldo just called it all lies. And I think, you know what, Ronaldo does want to leave, but I reckon it was quite a professional meeting where they just laid out their thoughts. They left it at that and he went to training and he was all professional. And I think, you know what, Ronaldo's called the press a liar. And I, I will believe Ronaldo, you know, Ronaldo, he doesn't talk about, he doesn't talk about every bit of rumour, but he does say, no, that's not true. That's a lie. And we know that the media love to use Ronaldo's name. If you put Ronaldo or Man United's name in an article, you're going to get mad views. Like you're going to get absolutely mad views if you put Ronaldo or Man United's name in an article. And from what I'm hearing and from the impression I get, I think that um, is the audio working? Someone just said they had no audio. I get the 100% impression that basically it was a respectful talk between Ronaldo and Tenog. Ronaldo wants to leave. Tenog wants to keep him. There was a respectful disagreement, but I don't think Ronaldo's is annoyed as it was said because this was obviously what was said that George Mendes told Man United that Ronaldo's adamant about leaving, but Mendes left negotiations less than positive that Ronaldo would get his move. So the news is apparently Ronaldo Mendes has gone to Man United and gone, yeah, Ronaldo has to leave. Ronaldo has to leave. He's adamant on leaving, uh, but now they feel like he's not going to get that move. I, I, again, I do think that story is a bit of a weird one. I think Cristiano Ronaldo would be professional. I think Cristiano Ronaldo will want to leave Manchester United. I think if Cristiano Ronaldo wants to leave and a club comes in from that he wants, he will get that move. Um, but I just think, you know, I think a lot of the stuff that the media is feeding is obviously false. And the thing I don't like is they're saying Ronaldo is adamant about leaving Man United. Is, Ronaldo, is it a media narrative? Because we know the media don't like Ronaldo. And we know if the media talk negatively about Ronaldo, they get clicks. Do you guys think there could be a potential media narrative here where they're, they're making out that Cristiano Ronaldo wants to leave more than he does to generate clicks, to generate that negativity, to generate that story? I think it's a case of Ronaldo wants to leave, but will be respectful. But maybe the media are making out like Ronaldo is desperate to leave and he's fuming and he's angry like the media do as well. 
Uh, guys, please do smash that like button and of course subscribe down below to Alice Talks Up if you're new. We're on nine, we're on 42,996 subscribers. I'm only four subscribers away from 42.3k. So please do subscribe down below if you're new to the channel as well. Only four subscribers away from 43k. It's absolutely three to subscribe. So if you're not subscribed, it'll be really appreciated. But the sound seems to be all right with everyone. Someone said Ronaldo should join Everton. Uh, Rooney should join Man United. <laughs> Don't think that's going to happen. Don't think that's going to happen. And missing the entire preseason and tour is not putting things aside and being professional. You make a good point there, Alex. I'm going to give my honest opinion on the Ronaldo situation, yeah? And that's what's been reported about Ronaldo. And then Ronaldo called that story a lie. I think that Ronaldo wants out of Man United. I think he's. I think he didn't go in preseason because he wants out. And I think Ronaldo thought he would have got that move. I generally think when Ronaldo announced that he was going to leave Man United, I think he thought he would have got that move sorted. And I think he thought he would have had a club lined up for him and he didn't. I think Ronaldo's then realised he hasn't got a club lined up for him. He might have to stay at United and has come back to United and is now being respectful. I think, you know, you make a good point there, Alex. I think the situation with Ronaldo is, I think he was expecting that when once he announced he was going to leave, that people wanted him, there was going to be clubs there for him, he would have gone to buy and it would have all been sorted and it's not. And I think when Ronaldo now knows the possibility of him staying at Man United is quite likely due to the lack of suitors. And I think now he's being respectful. And I think now he knows that there's not that many suitors out there for him. He's not adamant in leaving Man United, but he wants to if he can find the right suitor. And I think now he's just going to go about it and be really, really professional. He's embarrassed himself. He's made a storm. I think the media have lied to make him sound worse. But yeah, I do agree. He didn't go on the preseason tour. He did want out of United and he hasn't got any suitors. But what I think is being lied about is the meeting. I think the meeting, we were all told that it was a feud between Ronaldo and the board and that George Mendes and Ronaldo and Man United had a very tense meeting. Ronaldo left the meeting very unhappy. We were told all this information about this whole meeting. Um, and maybe the information we've been told is, is a slight exaggeration because, you know, that's sort of the information that Ronaldo, of course, is calling, causing lies. If you just join the live stream, that's what Ronaldo had to say about the news on the screen, basically calling it a lie as well. Uh, it will be This will be a difficult job for Ten Hag. Hope he gets trophies and makes Man United great again. Me too as well. I don't want Frankie Jong at this point. Give us Serge. I, I, I don't want Milinkovic Savage. I personally disagree. Uh, we get linked to Milinkovic Savage every summer and we never want him as well. If Ronaldo really wants to leave for the Champions League, then why announcing now? He could have told earlier, timing's horrible, I agree. I do think Ronaldo wants to go, but I just don't think there's many clubs that want Ronaldo. And Ronaldo want to leave and we should let him go cheap uh, with our thanks to helping him out at a terrible season. I have no issue with Ronaldo wanting to leave. I can't blame Ronaldo for wanting to leave. The club is a mess. I do not like how Ronaldo's gone about wanting to leave. I do not like how he didn't go on pre-season tour. I do not like how the Ronaldo wanting to leave situation has gone so public and there's been this big mess about it. That's what I do not like about it. But we have to remember there was the same, there was the exact same situation with Harry Kane last summer. Kane made it so public that he wanted to leave Tottenham, didn't leave Tottenham, stayed at Tottenham, had a good season. Uh, look, I, I think because Ronaldo wants to leave and if, you, if, if a club that Ronaldo wants to go to comes in for him, you've got to let him go. I'm against keeping any player at Man United that doesn't want to be here. I think we need Ronaldo, but I think because he's, he's, he's desperate to leave, because he wants to leave, if a club that is good wants him and makes us an offer, let him go. And there's no point keeping a player who doesn't want to be here. But there's a lot of people saying, let him go, let him go, drop him, drop him, drop him. The exact same happened with Harry Kane last summer and Harry Kane had a really good summer as well. But yeah, uh, yeah, sure, Alice. When he doesn't leave now, Ronaldo will, will starting things up all January window. I think the thing is, I think that January, if we have a poor start to the season, I think January window is going to be a mess. You know what's mad is we haven't even signed. Well, we we haven't even had a good chance to the window. I just wanted to end. Like it's honestly, we need two more midfielders. We need another attacker, and we are going to need a right back. We need four more signings, but uh, you know, I take three. You know, I take two at this rate. I take another midfielder or attacker at this rate and be done with it. United are not organising this transfer window. United still need a lot of players to come in. But I'm at the point where my mindset right now is just end the transfer window. Like I generally sit in there just like end the transfer window because it's the sagas and the speculations that's been going on and on and on. This Ronaldo thing has been going on for a couple of weeks now. I'm bored of it. It's the young thing. Monday, Monday will be the 12th week of the young negotiations. The 12th week, three months Monday will make. Three months for De Jong. I'm going crazy. Anthony's been going on since May. De Jong's been going on since May. And Ronaldo's saga's been going on a month. And every single bit of news and saga has been going on for so long and so long and so long that I, I am just, I just want the chance of to close so we don't have saga. I, I, like January, if this, if, this, if this is the same as January, 
I'm going to be going mad as well. Scary part is who does the board, board replace Ronaldo with an inconsistent Martial and unproven teenager from Salzburg? That's the worrying thing. I do want to get into the Sesco news. I do quite like Sesco, but you make really, really good points there. Who do we place, replace Ronaldo with? You know, there's no Ronaldo replacement out there. I mean, long term, you can look at a Tammy Abraham if he continues to do well in that league. I did say Skamaka, but there's no one out there that I, that's going to cost a reasonable amount of money that I'm like, that, that they guarantee us 20 goals. Because there's not many strikers out there anymore that guarantee you 20 goals. There's Lewandowski, there's Ronaldo, there's Haaland. I don't think many other strikers guarantee you 20 goals. I mean, am I, am I, I'm probably missing Benzema, obviously, Benzema. But there's, there's not many players out there that play strike and guarantee you 20 goals. There really isn't. There's no, this the, the market is so tight. Of players like Tammy Abraham and Oshmeen that are decent players, but are still like 10, 12 goal season strikers and not absolute world beaters. They're the type of players that will be costing 78 million because there is a pure lack of strikers in the market. And obviously I like this Benjamin Sesco guy. I like the look of Benjamin Sesco to Man United. But as you say, he's not going to come in and replace Ronaldo. He's not going to come in and be a regular starter. It's very, very unlikely. I mean, I, you know, he's you know he's a good young up and coming player, but he's not here to come in and score twenty goals right away and make that instant impact. But this is what was said about Benjamin Sesco. Fabrizio Romano has confirmed that Manchester United's interest on Benjamin Sesco is concrete. Concrete, and United have had direct contacts with his agents. It was confirmed by Fabrizio Romano today that our interest in Sesco is legit. And we've had direct talks with Sesco's agent as well. Uh, Dybala was free, but he's not a striker that gets you 20 goals as well. Harry Kane, Harry, literally, there's Harry Kane, there's Benzema and Lewandowski are old, and there's Haaland. And there's not many other players out there that you're like, oh, they're going to get me 20. Um, you're going to get me 20 goals as well. Martial can be front man while Sesco levels up. I do think if you start Martial as your main man and Tenor gets the best out of Martial, he can be good. Martial got 17 non-penalty goals in the Premier League season. Martial is capable, and people will laugh, people will call me crazy, but Martial is more than capable of, of having, you know, a 15 to 20 goal season in the Premier League he is, if he finds form and if he stays fit, because there is a good player in Anthony Martial. The problem with Martial is it's a risk. He's very inconsistent. He only works when he's the main man, he's the number nine. And when things are going well for Martial, things are going great. But when things are going bad, Martial falls in that hole. And I like Martial. I think he's a great striker. He's a great player. And I think start the season with Martial, Sancho, Rashford front three. But, you know, they're all looking great in pre-season. Martial, Sancho, Rashford. And I've always said I rate Martial, Sancho, Rashford. I think they're a brilliant front three. They're the front three that Oli dreamed of. I think they could absolutely rule out. But last season, they all disappeared. They all disappeared. And the season before that, Martial disappeared. And they'd been severely lacking. And and, and that's what worries me. It's, it's brilliant as the front three have been on pre-season. As much as I rate all of those players, they did disappear. Um, you know, I think Martial was brilliant. He's been doing brilliant on preseason, but are we going to get the Martial of, are we going to get the NHS COVID Martial that was absolutely one of the best strikers in the world? Or are we going to get the Martial that stunk up the place for the last year and a half? Because if we get the best Martial, if we get Martial at his best, then we're absolutely fine. Because I love Martial at his best, but, you know, and I trust Tenor to get the best out of Martial. But we don't know the Martial we're going to see as well. And what I will do is I will actually show you what I tweeted the other day. Um, let me get it up here. Um, I did a little joke here, but what did I tweet? I tweeted, here it is, here it is, here it is. I said in 1920, Sancho got 20 goals and 20 assists. Martial got 23 goals and 12 assists. And Rashford got 22 goals and 12 assists. 40 goal contributions, 35 goal contributions, 34 goal contributions. Okay. This front three can ball out if they want to. They absolutely can. It's just, can we get the best out of them as well? Uh, yeah, you can't replace Ronaldo, but even if you get Ronaldo replacement, we won't win trophies. So the best way is to lower expectations and let the project players get game time. <sighs> You're probably right. I don't like that, but you are probably right when you say that as well. That's why we need Dolberg to add more quality depth to striker. I'm not too familiar with Bundesliga strikers, but apparently all the striker gems seem to be in the Bundesliga. Um, and maybe that's the way we go. Because uh, I know Schick and um, Sasa, Kasava apparently are quite good. I haven't watched, I, haven't, I didn't watch the Bundesliga once last season. I'm not even going to lie, I didn't watch the Bundesliga once last season. The only time I saw Bundesliga was Europa League or Ch and Champions League games. I saw Ndika, I thought he was quite a good centre back, but now we've got Martinez. You know, that's the thing. Marshall's inconsistent, injury prone, and if he had his way, he would have left the club. True, Marshall did want to leave last summer. That is all solid points. I did a thing actually today. 
And I said, Man United transfer window explained. We started the transfer window. We, we've got Ten Hag in, and this is that this is the eighth uh, phase transfer window we've had so far. We've got Judge had gone, Woodward had gone, Ten Hag had come in. You know what it was an awful season, but let the rebuild begin. Let Ten Hag do his thing. Judge just gone. Ten Hag's here. There was the Paul Mitchell rumours. Oh my God, are we going to have Paul Mitchell, Ten Hag, and Ragnick working together? Whoa, we're building something. Then Ragnick sacked. Then the reality check steps in. And then it's everyone signing players but us this transfer window. What is going on? Arsenal have brought this player and they might get Rafinha and Teddy Lemons and Spurs have got this and City have signed three players and Liverpool have got this and we're losing it. And then all of a sudden we're going, where's De Jong? Where's De Jong? Sign De Jong, we haven't signed anyone. And then all of a sudden we get Malasia, we hijack the Malasia deal and then we get Ericsson agreed and then we're closing on Martinez and we're like, Mert and Madness, can't believe people were judging the transfer window so early on. Mert and Madness, I told you guys not to worry. Mert and Madness has transfer the window. Oh, look at us, we're back, we're back, we're back. Couple weeks go by, where's Dion? Couple more weeks go by, where's anyone? What's happening? Are we doing anything? Why is it taking us two weeks to register? Martinez and Ericsson and right now we're sitting here oh my god the season starts in a week we haven't brought a midfielder we've only brought in three new players we've had a 50 million pound net spend holy crap we're absolutely screwed that this is this is the this is the cycle this is the cycle of our summer absolute cycle honestly and that, that has been our summer so far as well. That's that's how it's played off. We, we've gone from this high expectation of this is the rebuild, Paul Mitchell, Ragnick, Tenag, all working together to this. As soon as I said that RB uh, Salzburg value Sesco at 55 million, one report is saying he's 35 million, another report is saying he's 55 million. I'm going to go slap bang in the middle and say if United want Sesco, they're going to have to pay 45 million, which I think is massively overplaying. Tenag style equals Man United is injury prone already injury prone yeah look I, we need depth because i think we're injury prone and building fc exactly building fc but that's me just going on as well what's my fpl should i make an fpl i will make an fpl i promise i'll make an fpl as well if there are any strikers that you guys think would replace ronaldo let me know down below is there still time for to get frankie de Jong on loan I think we will get Frankie De Jong. I still, I still think we'll pull through and manage to get a deal for Frankie De Jong done. People will call me crazy. I'm trying to stay positive. I still think United could possibly get a Frankie De Jong, De, 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 De Jong deal done. Honestly, it's like a tongue twister. I, no, I am still confident that United will get something done for Frankie De Jong. Uh, people will call me crazy. I, I still have a little bit of positivity that we will make some moves for Frankie De Jong as well. Um, but actually, I want to get more into the Sesco news. I want to get more into Sesco news. So actually... Let me share my screen again. Let me share my screen again, because you guys say you prefer when I actually get the news up on the screen. So this is what Romano had to say regarding Sesco to Man United. Fabrizio Romano confirmed today. I want to just get into the news. Um, Fabrizio Romano confirmed today that Manchester United's interest in Benjamin Sesco is genuine and Man United have had talks with Sesco's agents. And that was confirmed by Romano. He did say the issue is that RB Salzburg's answer on Sesco is we want to sell him next summer, not this summer. So Manchester United would have to submit an important bid if they do want to sign Sesco. And that's what Fabrizio Romano said. And he also followed up by saying not only Manchester United, but Newcastle and other clubs have also asked for Sesco, including probably Real Madrid and Bayern Munich. It was also reported today by Samuel Luckhurst that Manchester United football director John Murta met with the agent of RB Salzburg striker Benjamin Sesco last week. And it's understood uh, Murta... Um, rendezvous with Sesco's agent last week on Wednesday to gauge the possibility of a transfer. So Romano and Lutgers have confirmed that United are in for Sesco and we have had talks for Sesco as well. But it came out from the mail that Manchester United were told it would take 55 million to buy Sesco because they do not want to sell them this summer, which I just think that is absolutely crazy money. But it seems, and it did come out from the mail, that United are leading the race to sign Sesco. So we know that United are in for Sesco, for which Romano has confirmed that. But apparently United are leading the race to sign Sesco as well. So I'm not sure what's going to go on with Sesco. I think the fact that Anthony is looking pretty much down the drain because he's 100 million euros. I think that our chances of getting Sesco have significantly increased. Uh, but 55 million on Sesco. I'm going to go for 45 million on Sesco. Will United do that? Maybe because they, they failed to get Anthony as well. Uh, 55 likes and two or 300 likes, guys. So please do hit that like button if you have not already. And of course, subscribe down below to Manchester United if, if you are new as well. Only hope for us to get Frankie Jong if we still have the number 21 vacant, says 
Honestly, Man United have left number 21, who would have gone to Ericsson wanted 21, but United are like, no, 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 we ain't giving 21 away to anyone. United aren't, United aren't playing around with 21. They're not giving it away to anyone because they're like, you know what? We're saving that for De Jong. And United are still positive with De Jong. I will get into the De Jong news as well. I think with Sesco, Romano's confirmed an interest. Romano's confirmed agent talks. And it has been confirmed United are leading the race. But we will have to overpay for Sesco. And I think Sesco is one of those signings that if we will get him, it will be a last minute August panic buy. Sesco will be the Amad Diallo 2.0. We failed Anthony. We didn't get Ten Hag on attacker and let's panic and overpay for Sesco. If we get Sesco, it's because we don't get Anthony. And United panic. That, that's what I generally think on Sesco. I'm happy that we'd sign Sesco. I think he's a great young player. He scored against Liverpool, which makes me like him more. But I don't think, I just think that we'd be massively overpaying. And, and almost, he is a player that I'd rather wait until next season and get the, the 20 odd million pounds. But when you don't sign an attacker, then you need Sesco for the depth. We're actually going to need him as well and actually have some reliance on him as well. So the transfer news that's come out today, guys, and I do want to get into this transfer news quickly and quickly run through it. And this has come out from Samuel Luckhurst that Manchester United are in the market for at least one attacking addition, preferably two. It was also said that uh, Murta met uh, Basovic and Ten Hag stressed that United need more options as their squad is thin. And apparently um, Ten Hag is starting to stress. Uh, it's sort of come out that Ten Hag is starting to stress about the start of the season. He's worried about the lack of squad depth. Um and obviously, he said that the club's pursuit of midfielder Frankie de Jong is about to enter the 12th week. But the thing here is Ten Hag stressed that United need more options. Ten Hag's not happy. The season starts this week and Ten Hag is stressing due to the lack of options at Manchester United. Ten Hag's like, oh my God, we need more options. We need more options. And it's starting to stress. And that's not a good report to be coming out that Ten Hag's getting worried from Samuel Luckhurst there. Not at all. It's also been said Eric Ten Hag is intent on adding a midfielder and forward to his squad, says Samuel Luckhurst. And I think that will be De Jong and maybe Sesco or Anthony. I think that is the plan. I think we'll end the transfer window with maybe a third goalie, De Jong and Anthony. And I think we won't get Anthony. I think it will be a third goalie, De Jong and a panic last minute by attacker. Maybe Sesco, I'm not sure. Uh, we are in for Sesco. Roman has confirmed it. I think if we don't get Anthony, we will move for Sesco. But will United be willing to pay the £55 million asking price for Sesco that's currently been reported? I'm not sure as well. It's also been said that uh, Facundo Palestri, Ahmed and Chief Chong all spent last season on loan and could be transferred out before the deadline. And that apparently he's looking at giving Ahmed and Chief Chong loans. I think the fact that Facundo Palestri has gone to Norway, but Ahmed and Chong haven't, means that maybe it could be an Ahmed and Chong loan and we're having to keep Palestri due to lack of options and squad depth. And there was also a report that came out that Porto do want to re-sign Alex Tellers on loan. However, Porto are denying this, so no one wants Tellers. But we know that Tenog wants to get rid of Tellers. We know Tenog wants to get rid of Bailly Jones and Tenog wants to get rid of Juan Bissaka, whether they'll go or not. We'll have to wait and see. He also wants to get rid of Tu and Zabi. It's quite rowing that we haven't got rid of Tu and Zabi, Bailly, Jones, or any of the players that Tenor actually wants to get rid of as well. But onto the De Jong news, onto the De Jong news, what's been said about De Jong as well. De Jong's wage deferral remains the sticking point, according to senior United sources, with the 25-year-old owed £70 million by Barcelona. And multiple sources have confirmed De Jong's preferences to stay at Barcelona, but United are emboldened by his working relationship with manager Ten Hag. He said that Manchester United are still hopeful to sign Frankie de Jong, but the deal remains fraught with problems. And Manchester United are also open to adding a new right back, but will struggle to justify an addition because they've already bought defenders. He's also come out and said that United Ten Hag does want a right back. Ten Hag wants a midfielder, Ten Hag wants an attacker, and Ten Hag wants a right back. Because we've already got a left back and a centre back in, Ten Hag is going to sort of go for attack in midfield before he goes back to right back as well. The only good option to go for is Sesco, says Kelvin. My ideal summer, De Jong and Cuckoo, Timber, Cucurelli, Hakim. I mean, that will be really nice, but it's not FIFA, but that would be ideal. I mean, honestly, my ideal scenario right now is that we get De Jong in, we get um, Lamer in, and we get Cuckoo in. That would be my ideal scenario right now. De Jong and Cuckoo, Lamer and Dumfries. That's not going to happen, but that would be my idea, Cyril. Uh, Cyril is focusing returns to Man United as legendary manager handed official position on new look brand in shock move imagine and considering city have said he's not going for less than 80 million you might want to check your sources um we've been we've been said that it's 55 million but who knows every single source is giving a different price for sesco and all of that as well um but Lema wants buying, but the problem is RB Leipzig do not want to sell Lema to buy him. Uh, Lema might want buying, Lema might want to move to buy him, but RB, RB Leipzig, sorry, they, they don't want to sell any of their players to buy him because buying are direct rivals. The problem is with Ragnik gone, our chances of getting Nkuku and Lema drop drastically. Now, United like Nkuku, United, and Nkuku signed to stay at uh, RB Leipzig for another year, but 
it's one of those where I think if maybe we'd have got Ragnik, we'd have a good chance against someone like Nkuku. But look, guys, I'm going to wrap up today's live stream. It's a little bit of a shorter live stream than normal because I've just got loads to do. I'm, I'm off out tonight, so I've got loads to go and do. So make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe down below if you're new. Make sure you share the video. And thank you, everyone, for watching. I will be back tomorrow. I'm doing a watch along for United versus Atletico Madrid tomorrow, followed by a match reaction, followed by a live stream it tomorrow evening where I will address a lot of the live chats on my live stream tomorrow evening. I do apologize that this is quite a, a, a rush live stream. I've just got loads to do. Uh, but smash the like, subscribe, share all of that big up everybody <laughs> as gas says but yeah i will talk to you guys later see you next time bye